welcome to the UGC series of lectures in zoology. Dear students, today we have selected a topic on the utility of fish hematology. Let us first introduce you with the topic what hematology is. Hematology is the study of the blood composition. Hematology has become now popular among the fish biologists, environmental aquaculturists as well as those who are concerned purely with the aquatic environment. Fish hematology is a subject of relatively recent practical use in field. As the demand for the fish production, especially of the inland fish production has increased, the concern for the health management of the fishes on one hand and the maintenance of the ambient environment of the fishes and third, the production of the commercial amount and requirement of the fish has become a natural component of fishery management. Therefore, when we come to the fish hematology, we can always trust the results of fish hematology to monitor fish health as well as its environment. And for that, we require hardly one or two drop to not more than one ml of blood of the fish for diagnosing either its health or its ambient environmental conditions. And for that, first let us know what are the components of hematology. So under this talk today, we will discuss the following aspect. First, the what the fish blood is. Second, the components of the fish blood. Third, various steps to study the hematological aspects. Fourth, how to diagnose with the help of various parameters the fish health and assess its environment. Let us start with the introduction of the components of the fish blood. Like the human blood, fish blood is also made up of two components. One is the cellular part of the blood. These are the different type of blood cells. And second is the liquid part of the blood known as plasma. The blood components or the cellular components of bloods are two types. Number one, they are red blood corpuscles. Red blood corpuscles are full of hemoglobin and hemoglobin is required essentially for respiration. That is the red blood cells with the help of hemoglobin are carriers of oxygen from lungs to various parts of the body for the internal combustion of the food material or for the production of energy in the form of ATP. The other cell components are the white blood cells in the blood. The white blood cells are named because they are not red colored as the red blood corpuscles which are also known as erythrocytes. The red color is due to the red component that is hemoglobin and this redness is due to the iron element in the hemoglobin. Now among the white blood corpuscles which are also called as leukocytes there are three major types in fishes. That is the agranular white blood corpuscles. Second, there are thrombocytes or the blood platelets as in case of human beings. And third category is that of the granular leukocytes. The agranular leukocytes are again mainly of two types. That is lymphocytes and monocytes. A third type also occasionally occurs in fish blood. These are the phagocytes. And then coming to the granular type of the leukocytes in the fish blood, these are polymorphonuclear neutrophil cells. Second are the orange colored, granule colored cells known as eosinophils. And third are the dark stained basophilic cells or the basophils. A Another category which is important in the fishes and is invariably present even under healthy normal conditions is that of the hemoblasts. 
the hemoblast cells are the precursors of the leukocytes of the blood corpuscles. Now, red blood corpuscles which are responsible for the transport of the oxygen, the white blood corpuscles are mainly concerned with various immunological working within the body of the fish as in case of the human beings. And thus, any alteration in their ratio within the normal blood or under any given condition gives us an index of the state of the health of the fish or any other organism under study. Now, what are the blood components, hematological components which are taken into consideration is second point. For our hematological purpose to diagnose the fish health or its environment, we have following components. First, number of RBCs called as TEC that is total erythrocyte count. Second is total leukocyte count that is the total number of leukocytes in the blood per unit volume. Then third is the erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Fourth is the PET cell volume that is the amount of the red blood corpuscles in the unit area of the blood. Then next is the differential leukocyte count that is the ratio of the different type of the white blood corpuscles in the blood per 100 cells. We express it in percentages. Then another important parameter is clotting time of the blood. So, with the help of these important parameters which are the basic components of the hematology, we can always diagnose the status of fish health. But now let us know what are the pre-requirements to know and make use of the fish hematology for diagnosis purpose. First of all, we must have the knowledge of all the basic components of the fish hematology for every species of fish. You know, there are as many as 21,000 species of fish in the oceans and freshwater systems of the world. And out of that, even for our Indian waters, that is the inland waters or the freshwater systems, there are about 90 species which are almost universally present. And among those two, there are about 20 species of fishes which are commercially important. Even out of those 20 species, there are about 10 species which are used for the pond culture, for the lake culture or for the inland uh, fish culture. Therefore, if we want to make use of the hematology for the diagnosis of fish health as well as for the monitoring of the, its environment, that is the quality of the water in which the fish lives, then we must have the basic knowledge of the structure and components of fish blood. For that, first of all, we must have the knowledge of the total number of the RBC in per unit area we measure in for every species of fish. Second, we must have the knowledge that what are the differences in RBC number at different ages. We must have the knowledge of the total number of the white blood corpuscles. Then we must have the knowledge of the hemoglobin concentration of the blood. Then we must also have the knowledge of erythrocyte sedimentation rate and as well as the clotting time, packed cell volume and cellular structure variations. Now, all these parameters are highly variable under various ecological, environmental or health conditions. That is why we can always trust on the minimal change in any parameter under the given conditions. Let us talk for the values under normal healthy conditions. Even there, the fish shows a relation of these parameters with the size, with the age, with the body weight and of the nutritional condition of the fish. That means to say that at different ages with the difference in the measurement of the fish 
or its body weight, the value can vary. It is not always variable, but as I repeat it, it can vary. Second, with the season. Now, the season is totally an independent variable. A, the components of the season, for example, the temperature, that is the ambient water temperature, the amount of oxygen present in the water, the alkalinity and the pH of the water, the turbidity of the water, and the uh, uh, seasonal changes in all these parameters, then the pollution stays of the water, then the presence of various uh, chemical components in water like sodium, potassium, calcium, and all that matters to impact upon the blood values intrinsically on account of extrinsic factors. Now, let us see that how far the, these biological factors like age and sex and body weight have impact on the fish. The blood values of hemoglobin as well as that erythrocytes and leukocyte increases in fish up to a certain age. For example, if we take a case of Clarias batrachus, one of the most famous catfish having medicinal values as well as which have lesser number of spines in it and therefore is preferred uh, by many fish eaters that it is one of the most active fish and it has a high count of RBC as much as 4.5 million per cubic millimeter of blood. Similarly, it has nearly 12 to say as much as sometimes 18 gram percent of hemoglobin in its blood. Similarly, its white blood corpuscles may range between 6,000 to as high as up to 20,000 per uh, ml of blood. So, therefore, we can see that these parameters have a certain range of variation, but they vary change. That is, in early stages, the values are less. They may start, for example, the RBC value may start from around 1.2. Uh, millions per cubic milliliter of blood to as high as 4.5 millions per cubic millimeter of the blood. And this rise is in relation to the age as well as in relation to its biological requirements. For example, when we talk of the seasonal changes in these blood parameters, we find starting from January, if we take it a base value in generally mostly the RBC value, the hemoglobin content and the PCV are at low level and they start gradually rising at the environmental and ambient temperature on one hand rises around the fish from January onward and it slowly rises up to March and in April it start rising faster little faster and gets its peak value around the year during May and June, when the ambient temperature of water is highest, but oxygen contents are relatively low and intrinsically the fish is preparing for spawning. The spawning condition that is the egg laying stage of the uh, fish is very important and during these all months say between March to say June, the fish, especially the female, was preparing uh, largely to spawn in the ensuing monsoon months of July and August. Therefore, a fish, especially the female fish, has to incur a lot of uh, energy investment of its body to produce large number of eggs. Therefore, its metabolites move from various body parts, including blood, to nurse and develop the X. Similarly, the male fish is developing its testes and sperm counts so that it can fertilize the thousands and millions of eggs which the female will lay in July and August. And at that time, the body metabolism on one side is critically very high synthesizing eggs. On the other hand, the other aspect of blood parameters are at low. Then after spawning, the temperature simultaneously falls in the environment on August onward 
and the fish is called in spent stage. Then the fish is not eating much also and gradually it is under rest and the blood parameters are also at low ebb. Then up to say December, the blood parameters are towards lower side but start gradually recuperating and gaining momentum towards rise. And similarly, on the other hand, the seasonal changes are impacted by the concentration of dissolved oxygen in water. Because higher the amount of oxygen available to a fish, the lesser the requirement of the hemoglobin to transport it within fish from gills, that is the respiratory organ of the fish, to various tissues. Therefore, there is often an inverse relationship with the amount of oxygen in the water with the amount of hemoglobin in the blood. Then the another important factor is the nature of activity of the fish. A fish like clarias, which has additional qualification of amphibious mode of respiration because most of the fishes respire only with the help of the gills or partly with the skin. But this fish clarias, known as magur in uh, uh, local Hindi, this fish has another respiratory organ uh, known as the accessory respiratory organ which are able to respire, that is they are able to take oxygen directly from the air. That is to say, if this fish clarius is kept out of water for 5 to 6 hours, it will not die. Whereas another important fish like Labio rohita, known as commonly rohu or Cyprinus scarpio or tortor, they do not have any accessory respiratory organ and if we put them out of water, they may die within next 5 to 10 minutes because they do not have accessory respiratory organ. And this accessory respiratory organ make the fish like clarius, heteropneustase, anabus and other fishes very active and they have a very efficient blood vascular system and normally higher amount of hemoglobin in them. So, a sluggish fish usually have a low amount of hemoglobin in its blood while an active fish usually has a higher amount of hemoglobin in its blood. Then coming to the point that how the disease condition may impact the fish blood values or in other way how we can diagnose whether a fish is healthy or some diseased. If we take a drop of blood and estimate the RBC, the TLC that is the total leukocyte count, total erythrocyte count and hemoglobin concentration and further the erythrocyte sedimentation rate of the blood, we can definitely find out that there is fall or there is rise in the normal values at that particular time of the year and for that particular age of the fish. And once we compare those values, we can always tell, yes, the fish is having a healthy nutritious status or is having either a malnutritious status or it is diseased. Now to find out the disease, we will further expose the fish and try to find out the, whether the disease is like cancerous disease or like parasitic infections, worm infections or they are dropsy or they are say uh, necrosis of the body or there are ulcerations. We can always correlate the values under these disease conditions with the healthy conditions. But first of all, we must have values for healthy conditions as well as for disease conditions. Then only we can compare, diagnose and then treat the fish for the disease or for its malnutrition. Similarly, when we talk about the monitoring of the ambient environment, we find that these days due to anthropogenic encroachment of the aquatic system, we have highly polluted our aquatic ecosystem that is the habitat of the fish. And for that purpose, we must also have the basic limnological or hydrological values of the water that is the ambient environment of the fish. First of all, we must also have the normal values of the oxygen for the water, its limits and for the concentration of various salts, for the pH, for the transparency, for the turbidity and all that thing. And once we have all those parameters for a lake, for a pond, for a river or for even our aquarium uh, in our house, 
we can always compare any change in the blood value and try to correlate it with either with the disease that is the health status of the fish or with the ambient environmental or broadly speaking ecological conditions of the fish. Then we can for example, if the concentration of the oxygen falls in the aquatic environment, the fish becomes asphyxic. That is the low amount of oxygen is being made available to the fish due to low concentration of oxygen available in dissolved condition in water. Now there can be a conditions of anoxia in the fish that is total or absence of oxygen in the water. The fish becomes uneasy, its rate of respiration will increase and to meet the body oxygen requirements the more amount of the red blood corpuscles will be released into the blood. That means there will be an increase in the RBC count as well as there will be increase in the number of immature red blood cells in the circulation. That will be a symptom that the fish is under oxygen stress. Similarly, if there is rise or fall in the pH, the buffering system uh, pH in the water of fish habitat, there will be an ambient uh, adjustment with the help of our technologies to keep the pH within the tolerable range for the fish. This is again reflected by the hematological observations. The moment there is acidosis uh, in the ambient environment, that is the water becomes little more acidic, the hemopoiesis starts slowing. That is soon the, there will be the lesser number of erythrocytes being released in blood and as well as less of the uh, hemoglobin will be made available. But on the other hand, if there is a sudden change in the chemical nature of the blood, for example, we have observed under the practical field conditions that if the molasses from a sugar mill are released into a river, within few minutes the fish hemoglobin and RBC rises up. It rises up for first hour, then the fish hematological parameters starts slowing down and their number goes down. There starts a lysis of the red blood corpuscles within the blood vascular system and as a result the fish starts getting almost asphyxiated and a slow death process ensues. And if the uh, release of the uh, molasses into the stream is not diluted or is not checked within an hour or two the fishes start dying. They will try to escape out of the situation but the water will just the, uh, uh, the polluted effluent containing water will follow it. As a result the fish would start going under asphyxia and its pH will start eroding its skin and hamper its uh, say integumentary respiratory ability and then soon its pH inside the blood will be disturbed and the enzymatic activities disturbing the hematological parameters will begin. Similarly, if there is release of say sewage material from our household into a river stream, it immediately increases the biological oxygen demand of the aquatic system thereby it depletes the concentration of dissolved oxygen in the water and this again in the beginning it increases the amount of RBC and hemoglobin. But soon there is either poikilocytosis and there can be a polycythemia that is either there is rise in the size of the RBC or the different sizes of the RBCs are being released into the blood vascular system of the fish. That simply tells us that something is wrong with the process of the hemopoiesis and we can always try to correct the ambient environmental conditions. Now when we have gone uh, through these parameters in a specific manner and we correlate each parameter specifically in relation to age, in relation to ambient temperature, in relation to seasonal ch changes, in relation to the spawning condition of the fish, in relation to the feeding status of the fish, we can always establish normal values versus the values under ambient environmental changes or under due to infection, diseases and all that. 
And one important aspect, even we can diagnose the level of stress in the fish. We have biochemical parameters under hematology that is the lactic acid. The higher amount of lactic acid in the blood is always a sign of oxygen debt or oxygen stress to the fish. Thus, dear friends, I think we have discussed various aspects of utility of fish hematology in general as well as in very specific terms for monitoring the fish health on one side and for monitoring the ambient environment of the fish. And thank you very much for today.